Oh, we're going to get our dork on very, very shortly. But first, I want you to go to Facebook. Make sure you search for the Chris Top program, and I want you to like the page. I'm not too proud to beg. You can also tweet with me. You can tumble with me. Uh, you can check me out on Phone Zoo. There's, there's a gazillion places you can find me. Hi, I'm Chris Top. First off, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Chris Top program. While I try my best to keep the show as rated PG-13 as possible, sometimes things slip out, or sometimes things happen, and that's just the way live radio goes. And because this is the internet, the FCC isn't around to tell me what I can and can't do. So because of the occasional slip-up or the guest that might get out of hand, you really need to be 18 or older to listen. If you happen to be under 18, please make sure you get your parents' permission. And here Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. <laughs> you can either talk in the Christoph program. I am the one and only Christoph. <laughs> you can either talk in the Christoph program. Broadcasting live from my lavish studio apartment. The busy R and the Dibby did the was and that of that crack back in my we didn't know about the world wide web it was a whole different game Band played back when I was a kid Wanna get down in a cool way Picture yourself on a beautiful day Big bell bottoms in through a long hair Just walking in style with a part of an MP3 play You can listen to the music on the Christmas program <laughs> Chris Top program. And I am the one and only Chris Top broadcasting live from my lavish studio apartment here in sunny Clarksville, Tennessee, with an ocean view. How the hell are you, world? It's good to see this is two nights in a row for me. I was gone a month, so I've gotta make I've gotta make a few things up. I get that. It was almost see, I, I had to purposely wait until after midnight. Because it would have been two broadcasts in one day. And that just seems kind of trashy. So I didn't I didn't particularly want to do that. But nevertheless, I'm here. And it's so good to see you. It really, really is. Uh, oh, I've got a Lyrical Playhouse uh, coming up just a little bit later. And I'm sure you're going to recognize it. And I know a lot of people probably get hacked off at me. Because I do... My, my tweets are, are already hitting. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. Yeah, my Twitter's going crazy. It really, and that makes me feel good. Feel free to tweet away. Uh, because I love tweets. I don't know. It makes me feel important. And what was I saying? Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to do a Lyrical Playhouse uh, a little bit later. And I know, I know people get hacked at me because I never give the name of the song or the artist. But this one's really obvious. It's totally obvious, so hopefully you'll get this one. And I never do. That's just mean, isn't it? Isn't it mean? And you know how I'm always talking about zombies? Well, check this out. More proof that the zombie apocalypse is apoxtus. Now, if you, if, you, if you woke up this morning feeling like death... Oh, I've got a 300 seconds on the couch, too, a little bit later. I can't do anything without getting sidetracked. I know. I'm sorry. So if you woke up feeling like death... And it happens a lot, especially before you have your coffee. I get it. Now, it might not be just because you downed a picture of Cosmos last night. Now, it could be that you have Cotter's Syndrome. Syndrome. Now, have you ever heard of that? I had never heard of that. See, this looks like something somebody made up, but I promise you it's not. I promise, I promise you it's not. It's also called, are you ready for this? Okay, now think zombies. Think Walking Dead. It's also called Walking Corpse Syndrome. Hello? Hello? Zombies? Now, these people actually believe that they're dead. Now, Graham, he woke up one day believing he was a zombie. You know, I think I might call out of work for a couple of days. 
right? I, I'm I'm gonna call up I'm gonna call up work tomorrow when I'm supposed to go in. I'm gonna say, yeah, I can't make it today because, well, I have Cotter syndrome, and then I'll go uh, like that, and see, and it's a real thing. And that way, if I'm seen around town by someone I know, I'll just start walking funny, or I'll limp, or I'll find somebody and I'll bite them, and I, and I could probably get away with it. So so Graham woke up one day believing he was a zombie. Now, he stopped smoking, barely spoke, and he didn't eat. And he felt like, well, there's no point in smoking. There's no, there's no point in eating because I'm dead. <laughs> I, I don't mean to laugh because, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming this is legit because everything you read on the Internet is legit. Don't, don't forget, and plus everything you hear is legitimate as well. Abby is attacking the crap out of my hand. I'm sitting here in my chair, and I've got my elbow up on my desk, and I've got my other arm around the back of my chair, and my, my hand's kind of dangling, like in the air, and then all of a sudden these little claws and this mouth will just bite down on me. Anyway, his, his rare brain disorder, it compelled Graham to hang out in graveyards. He said that was the only place I felt at home. Now, thanks to treatment... Uh, he's actually getting better. You know what kind of treatment I would have gave him? I wouldn't stake right through the heart. That's what I would have gave him. I would I would have went to Craigslist and I would have got a wooden stake. Because you can find hookers. <laughs> you can find serial killers and you can find wooden stakes on Craigslist. So anyway, he says I don't feel that brain dead anymore. He thinks just feel he says things just feel a little bit bizarre sometimes. So Graham, I'd like to be one of the first. To welcome you back to the land of the living. Uh, now, I would like to welcome uh, everybody that's in the chat. Last night, or well, yesterday morning, uh, I did it. Now, if you're listening somewhere, and I know you are. I know. I know you're out there. If you're listening somewhere other than Spreaker, make sure you come on over to Spreaker.com. You sign up. It's, it's fun, it's easy, and it's free. And once you do that, you find my show, and then you can, you can talk to me while I broadcast. And I got to tell you, life, it don't get much better than that. So, so make sure you get over here, and make sure you join the chat, because if you're not chatting, I don't know you're listening, I can't say hello to you, so you can't get mad at me. <sighs> Hi, Nicole, how are you? Nicole is one of my Canadian friends. Now, if you enter the chat... You have to be very, very careful. Uh, especially if you just like to yell out gobble. Because we found out, uh, I guess it was... I guess it was the Thanksgiving before last. That gobble is actually the Canadian mating call. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you come in here and, you, and Nicole happens to be in the room and you happen to gobble, I cannot be held responsible. For what happens. I'm simply the broadcaster. What you do and what you say in my chat is, is your own business. Uh, but Nicole, it's good to see you. Uh, and it has been a while. Well, not really, because I was here just a few hours ago. I couldn't sleep last night, so I did one of those 4 a.m. broadcasts. It's good therapy. It, you should go back and listen to it if you get a chance. And I've got my good buddy Travis in the chat. Travis has his own show here on Spreaker as well. So make sure you join the chat and you check him out. All you have to do is click on Travis Boyd. And you can uh, go check out his show. Uh, but he says it's been a while. And it has been a little while. It, it, it has been a little while. And, and yeah, I mean, it, Mondays. You know, who likes Mondays? Especially when you can't sleep. But anyway, I, I made it through it. And I'm here. And Nicole said she did listen to my show. Nicole, thank you so much. Really, I appreciate you. Now, let's go on, or let's get on with the program. And I'm hoping, I had two people show up last night in the chat. I was so freaking excited that somebody showed up at four in the morning. Odd Dad happened to be visiting his, his relatives, or I think it was his in-laws, in, in the Netherlands. So, it was like 10 a.m. there. And then, uh, and then Clinton showed up. I don't know what Clinton was doing up at that time. I have no idea. Clinton's weird anyway. <sighs> You know, sometimes I think when you, when you put two things together, 
that are really good, then more than likely they're going to make something that's great. For instance, we, we talked about the pizza burger on one of the programs uh, not too long ago. And I had to give credit to Canadians. At, at that point of my life, I decided not to make fun of Canada anymore just because they came up with the pizza burger before we did. And I, I thought that was quite the accomplishment. This one I'm skeptical over. I'm not really sure who came up with this one, but we all know for a fact. We know 100% that bacon is really good. So if that, if that zombie apocalypse ever does happen, I want to make sure I got plenty of bacon. Also, I'm 100% sure that chocolate is really good. So I'm going to want to have some Hershey. But what, what do you like the best? See, I can't decide. I can't decide if I like the... See, I'm getting sidetracked again. I've got to learn how to focus. I really, really do. But I've got to ask this question too. What do you like? And, and you, can, you can post this on my Facebook page if, if, you, if you don't mind. Because I'm having issues. It's just like the issue I had with, with Kate Upton and Megan Fox. See, this is like... A three-stage side tracking. This is like this is like rough. So I had this dilemma with with Megan Fox and Kate Upton for months and months and months. I, I tried to decide who was hotter. And see, I think the biggest holdback for me is because I've always been attracted to brunettes. But then Kate Upton comes along. Oh, just messes up everything for me. Mess totally messes up everything. But I, I did. I put so much thought and, and <laughs> so much research in, into this, trying to establish who I liked the most. And I even surprised myself. It was Kate Upton. And I'm not sure what it may have been the Easter video that did it. So if you haven't seen uh, Kate Upton in her Easter, you need to Google that. And I'm talking to the guys. Or, and some of the girls, actually. But anyway, back to what I was formerly talking about. So you've got bacon, which had to have been sent from God himself. You have chocolate, which I'm sure fell from heaven at one time or another. But have you ever thought about putting the two together? Me? I haven't. Would I try it? I probably would. And hopefully I would be pleasantly surprised. So, I mean, if you're a fan of chocolate, maybe you're obsessed with bacon. If you, if you love your snacks, just ornament it with, a, with just a tiny bit of edible gold. Well, this is the treat for you. It's the 23 karat gold chocolate bacon. Yeah. 23 karat gold chocolate bacon. It, it's a real thing. And it's not going to cost you much more than maybe a, a sweatshirt at Old Navy. Uh, it's it's thirty nine ninety nine for I'm I'm guessing a strip of bacon. You know I don't know how good it is, and forty dollars is a lot to spend on something. I'm just not too sure of. So can I have like just a little corner for a buck, just so I can try it out? Now the new treat it combines um, this cherry wood smoked bacon. And then it's this semi-sweet dark chocolate. And then it's got the 23 karat edible gold flakes. Now you can leave the edible gold flakes off of mine if we can drop the price down just a little bit. Now the delicacy, it's available uh, for pre-order at Baconry. But if you need something uh, right this minute, maybe you can settle for the uh, retailer's chocolate bacon six pack or 20 pack of bacon caramels. And I'm sure... If you love bacon that much, and you love chocolate that much, I'm sure if you order this stuff and you start uh, eating it, I'm sure uh, you'll probably live longer. I'd like to also welcome Tyson to the chat. Fobble back to you, Tyson. It's very, very good to see you. And I think he's talking about a little uh, skit that I did about a, um, a not-so-smart turkey uh, for Thanksgiving. But it's, see, it's, it's amazing the things people remember me by. <laughs> 
And Travis, you're absolutely... I don't know, Travis. Wait a minute. Now, he says bacon goes on pizza and chocolate doesn't. Now, but have you ever had the dessert pizzas with the chocolate on them? Have you ever had the Oreo pizzas? See? See the point I'm making? So, I mean, the bacon and the chocolate, I don't know. It could work. But more importantly, now we've got a couple of dudes in here. We've got Travis in here. We've got Tyson. Who's, and any girls that may be bisexual or, or lesbian, please speak up. Uh, because I, I want to know who you think is hotter. Is it, it, see, and I've had this discussion before, and I hate going backwards. And I don't even know why I'm doing it. I think it's just because it's fun to talk about Megan Fox and Kate Upton. So who do you think is hotter? And I'm talking to everybody that likes women. Who do you think is hotter? Is it, is it Megan Fox or Kate Upton? Now, if you're a chick that's not into chicks, I don't want to hear from you. Because, because you're, what you're thinking is going to be all skewed and it's not going to be right. Now, Travis says he's had the dessert pizzas, but he meant actual pizza. Well, it's still pizza. I mean, it's at a pizza place. You can get it at a buffet. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, I don't want you to move because you're absolutely, positively, 100% for sure in the right place. We, we are going to grace you. And I say we, meaning myself and Abby. Abby, of which, which is my engineer. Uh, we're going to grace you with a lyrical playhouse. And we also have... A 300 seconds on the couch. Not too far away. My name is Dorkimus Prime, leader of the Dorkobots. I was sent to this tiny planet in hopes of uniting all Dorks against the evil Decepta Douche. Dorkobots, roll out. <laughs> on fire. No, it's not Woba, it's Waba. Waba. Dude, my neighbor just busted me stealing his Wi-Fi. I've got to end the show now. The Chris Stop Program. Join the best chat on Spreaker.com. Okay, I'm really, really feeling at this point, I'm feeling the Lyrical Playhouse. Now, if you've never uh, listened to a Lyrical Playhouse... Uh, I just I take a a popular song or maybe a not so popular song I don't know and I what I do is I turn it into what I feel like is a work of art I know it's it's probably not making a lot of sense to you so so just sit back go ahead and get your pipe out maybe a martini or whatever whatever it is you drink while you have your your little hef um, robe on and you're sitting in your easy chair and I want you just to lay your head back close your eyes and I want you to enjoy yourself because I am. I'm 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 truly a master thespian. I really am, and you'll you'll find that out here momentarily. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Lyrical Playhouse with the one and only Chris Top.
This has been another episode of Lyrical Playhouse by Mr. Chris Top. Five deadly terms used by women. Number one. Fine. This is the word women use to end an argument when she knows she's right and you need to shut up. Number two. Nothing. Means something and you need to be worried. Number three. Go ahead. This is a dare, not permission. Do not do it. Number four. Whatever. A woman's way of saying screw you. Number five. That's okay. She is thinking long and hard on how and when you will pay for your mistake. I love cell phones. I always keep mine handy just in case I ever witness a traffic accident. That way I can take photos for my friends and order a pizza while I watch. Ain't nobody got time for this. <laughs> the Top, broadcasting live to at least three people on Spreaker.com. the wall at the dance looking sharp in my high water sweatpants I wish I was at home where I could be blogging and watching wrestling I hang out and play magic cards at the school with all the crossing cards they're cool yeah I believe in magic I was first in line to buy Halo of the class I'm daydreaming about World of Warcraft while I write dirty words on my calculator I'll show you later even my mother picks on me I dress up when I watch Lord of the Rings even when I'm home by myself when I play dodgeball there is Top broadcasting live to at least three people on Spreaker.com. Breaking news Travis Boyd says uh, Death Monkey 06 on YouTube. 
He says some friends and uh, him, are, they're getting together and they're making a horror series. So uh, make sure you check. Because see, Travis is a little creepy anyway. So he's probably going to do pretty good with that. Also, I'd like to welcome my good buddy Toby to the chat. And yes, Toby, it's been way, way too long. That's not what she said. And we also have Scooter in the chat. He's my Red Bull loving IV hooked up. Uh, I should have said that the other way around. But anyway, he likes Red Bull. And he's a good buddy of mine. That's why he's up after midnight. Now, there's a couple of stories that I put in my headline. And I felt like I needed to draw these to your attention. Uh, just so you will have a little knowledge. Now, I was talking about chocolate just a minute ago. And I thought, I don't know if it's a good idea with bacon or not. I, I, just, I just don't know. Now, this one, I, I'm pretty sure it's not a good idea. Now... You give me a chocolate Easter bunny, I'll bite that little rodent's ears off in a heartbeat. No problem with that. You give me a Hershey bar, a Hershey kiss, no problem. You give me an edible chocolate anus, <clears throat> I may have some issues with that one. I'm just saying, I'm... <sighs> It just doesn't seem right. Why on earth? I mean, make a chocolate foot. Even make a chocolate nose. And I've seen chocolate body parts that, you know, like at those parties that we've all been to but we don't talk about. I've seen those too. Now, maybe there's one version of that I won't um, put in my mouth. Uh, but... I don't know that I can deal with an edible chocolate anus. Now, if you don't believe me, you can go to EdibleAnus.com and you can check this out. They even have a t-shirt you can wear and they have a coffee mug that says anus. I have a few friends, actually, I could get that for and it would fit just right. You know, they should make an anus fanny pack. I think that would be appropriate. So if you enjoy chocolates and you'd like to continue enjoying chocolates, then you may not want to listen to what I'm going to say. We've got the edible anus. Now, this is a Belgian chocolate candy. Hang on, I think I just got tweeted. See, now, if you're going to, if, if you're going to, uh, you know, say something to me on Twitter, make it some, at least talk about the edible anus so, I'll, so I can, you know, mix it in with the conversation. Anyway, it's a Belgian chocolate candy. It was handcrafted in England. The company claims that their confections were crafted from the delectable posterior of their stunning butt model. Now, if it was just the shape of a nice butt, like one of the heart-shaped butts or something, I could take a bite out of that. But why did you have to go all the way to the anus? I don't know that I could do it. Now, if I was blindfolded, I might enjoy it. But see, the thing is, there's no photographs of the model at all on their website. So, I mean, they could have used some guy that came over to cut the grass. Who knows? They could have, they could have crafted this out of his anus. I don't particularly want to, want to put a little chocolate mold of the, of the, the pretty model's anus in my mouth. And, and I don't want to put a, a, a chocolate mold of the gardener's anus in my mouth either. Now, it says that the site also says that a box of chocolate anuses would be the perfect gift for the whole family. <laughs> Maybe around Christmas. You know, what a great stocking stuffer that would be. Little Timmy just pulls out just a box of chocolate anuses. Here you go, little Julie. Here's your chocolate anus too. I hope you enjoy it. Really? For the whole family? I'm kind of embarrassed with the flirty green M&M. There's no way. No way I'm eating a chocolate anus. It's just the thought of it. You know? And see, Toby's got a good... Okay, Toby, why don't they just do that? You know, if you're going to make the anus, why not go all the way and, and make the chocolate poo? 
that comes out of the anus. You could, you could sell them together in a gift pack. It's ridiculous. Where do people come up with these ideas? And they're going to make a bunch of money off of it too, I'm sure. I thought this story was mortifying. Absolutely mortifying. I hope, I hope this never happens to anybody I know. Because I don't know how I would react if this happened to someone that I know. So guys, if you're not packing a lot downstairs, you may, I mean, if you're below average, you may want to have a seat. I mean, have you ever had just one of those days? I've got to adjust my headphones here. See, I wear glasses <clears throat> and they're smashing my ear against my glasses. So I had to, had to reposition my ear. Now, have you ever had one of those days? <laughs> this goes well beyond one of those days. After 66 years of living and identifying himself as a man, and this guy's from Hong Kong. He went to see a doctor. He was complaining of a swollen abdomen. Are you ready for this? Sit down. Doctors actually discovered that the swelling was due to an ovarian cyst. That made him an actual her. Yeah. The subject was found to have two rare genetic disorders that affect the chromosomes and actually increase male hormones, working in conjunction to result in a beard growth and a very small penis. Yeah. I, I guess it's good that he's been <clears throat> living as a man with a very small penis because had he realized he was a woman, what a shock that would be if you picked him up at the bar. You know, it's like, oh yeah, baby, I'm hitting a home run. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, time out. You said you were a chick. What is that? What is that? What is that down there? I know it's tiny, but still, it's a penis. So were it not due to the huge ovarian, um, uh, the ovarian cyst, his intriguing medical condition may have never been exposed. And that's what the doctors actually wrote in a study. Now, the patient has decided to continue identifying as a male and will take testosterone supplements. So, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, what do you do? One day it's like you, you, you have a penis and you feel like your whole life you're a male. Then all of a sudden, oh, wait, you're a female. Disregard the penis. Oh, okay, I'll start sleeping with men. See, I don't guess it works like, like that. <sighs> what a nightmare. I don't think I would ever, I don't think I would ever go to the doctor again. It's horrible. I'd like to say hello to Brandon. I'd like to welcome Brandon to the chat. Now, Brandon, I have to say this. Nicole just said something kind of funny. She said, does chocolate poop ever include nuts? Brandon, have we met before? Because if we haven't met before, I have, to, I have to tell you this. It's sort of an induction. See, what you've done is you've actually slipped through a wormhole and you're in a, in a separate part of the universe now. And uh, this is where the dorks actually come and hang out. This is like a, a dork safe haven is what it is. So if you're okay with that, if you're ready to step from the closet and embrace the light of your dorkhood, then Brandon, you are, my friend, in the correct place. Now, what you have to do is you have to go to my Facebook page. And please, everybody, if you haven't joined the Facebook uh, page yet, please do that. Please do that. Uh, go to Facebook and search for The Chris Top Program and make sure you follow the page. But uh, Brandon, I, I particularly want you to go uh, because I want you to post the dorkiest picture that you have of yourself. And if there's anybody in the chat that has not done that yet, then what that does is that shows the world that you're okay with your dorkhood. And, and maybe eventually people will stop picking on you, or maybe you'll just start to get where you're okay with it. Uh, Toby, <laughs> he says, uh, 
talking about the uh, the guy that goes to the doctor and finds out that um, he's really a woman. He says, that's your horror movie right there. And that's that would be a great horror movie. I mean, could you imagine the doctor coming into the room and telling the guy that, and then you've got that really suspenseful music that plays? See, that would be, um, that would be very interesting, I think, for a movie. Uh, okay, if you just tuned in and you've never heard of Lyrical, or not Lyrical Playhouse, I've already done that. So you miss Lyrical Playhouse. But if you've never heard of 300 Seconds on the Couch, you, my friends, are in for a treat. I'm the leader of Angry Birds Special Ops. Tonight, our mission is to put an end to the madness they call Rebecca Black in her wretched song, Friday. One giant slingshot, 500 birds, target Rebecca Black's mouth. Let's do this. Ready yourselves, men, for the greatest battle of your life. Aim, fire. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get Sir, it would seem as though Rebecca Black started singing as our birds were attacking, and each one of them disintegrated in midair. We should have never attacked on Friday. She gets down on Friday. You know what? Before I do that, I do want to do I want to do this first. Now, if you are in the chat and you actually have a show here on Spreaker, it is time, my friends, to spread the Spreaker love. And I, you don't have to wear protection to do this. All you have to do is click on whoever's in the chat and uh, identify yourself by having a show just by typing in show. Just the word show. And then if, if somebody does that, make sure you click on their name and follow their show. If you like it, give them a listen. If you don't, no big deal. At least you gave it a shot. And you never know, you might find something that you really enjoy. We're just here to spread that love all around. Let's get ready for 300 seconds on the couch. I really don't know what's going to take 300 seconds. I get paid by the hour. I didn't realize girls had nipples until I was 16. And you did what again? Well, yeah, I'm 39 years old and I make ringtones. You know, ringtones? And how did that make you feel, Chris? Man, I really love a good pretzel. The only bad thing about pretzels, it makes your mouth so dry. You know, it kind of gives you, gives you a bad case of cotton mouth. Anyway, holy crap, I just realized you're not Barbara. Now, Chris, who's Barbara? Well, she's my regular doc, but um, but that's okay. We'll just we'll just go on. Um, can I just pick up where I left off last week, Sarah? Well, my name's not Sarah, but go ahead. Uh, I appreciate that, doc. Well, I'm having some issues um, down below. And it's not what you're thinking. I mean, I can I can perform in the bedroom. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I I'm a nervous urinator. And on top of that, sometimes when I go to the bathroom at home, I have to sit down to pee. And I don't know if that's um, if that's crazy or if it's just because maybe it's my feminine side coming out. And it may just be because I don't want to miss the toilet. Because a lot of times when I get up in the morning, um, my stream will spray like in a, in a wide direction. So it's either sit down or buy two toilets and then aim for the middle. And I prefer to sit down uh, over that. But even when I go out to, uh, to public um, places and I have to use the bathroom, number one or number two, I have to make sure there's nobody in there. And then, if somebody happens to come in the bathroom while I'm doing my business, I'll raise my feet or I'll jump up on the on the on the toilet so they can't see that I'm in there. So last weekend, I take this trip out of town. I stop at one of those little gas stations to use the bathroom. I had to go number one, so I go in the bathroom and I unzip my pants inside of a stall. I don't ever use the open urinals. That's just asking for trouble. I mean, if there's some guy sitting there staring at my junk, there's no way I'm using the bathroom. I start my business. I've got a good steady flow going. 
when you hit 39 and you get a good steady flow going, you're, you're proud of yourself. I remember when I was younger, if I peed into the wind just right, I could have I got an easy 10 feet. So I'm standing there, going number one. Midstream, I hear the door open. So immediately, I stop. And that's not an easy task, Doc, to stop midstream. So I, I, I jump up on the toilet seat. And whenever I have to do that, I'm really careful because I don't want to fall in. The last thing you want to happen is your, is your foot to be stuck inside of a, of a gas station toilet. So I'm standing there and I'm, I'm balancing like a little ninja on the, on the thing. Worst case scenario happens. Little kid, probably seven years old, opens the door. It startles me, so I slip off the toilet. I fall on him, and then I can't control it anymore, and I, I, I peed all over the floor. Oh, my. What did you do? Well, Sarah, I think I did what any responsible adult would do. I gave the kid ten bucks. I told him to keep his mouth shut. Then I went over to the hand sink, and I just drenched us both in water. I proceed to bust the pipes under the hand sink, ran outside with the kid, and I told the attendant that he better fix the pipes in the bathroom. He gave me a free coffee and said he was sorry. And how did that make you feel, Chris? Well, Doc, I gotta tell you, at first I felt pretty good because I was thinking, I got a free coffee. And then I remembered I gave the kid ten bucks, so I, I felt pretty bad about it. So, Chris, how's your love life going? It is really funny you should ask that, Doc. The other day I went to see a movie, and I was standing in line. There was a woman right beside me in, in another line, and at the exact same moment we both said, word for word, I would like a small popcorn. What are the odds? And I have to say, before we even make it to the auditorium, she's got her hands all over me. It was just like in one of those Axe commercials. So naturally, I asked her if she wanted to go back to her place. Well, then she told me to sit down, and she'd be right back. I thought maybe I was too forward, and she was going to make a run for it. Well, she ends up coming back, and she sits down beside me. And then she tells me everything is cool. Her husband doesn't mind at all. I've seen that episode on Dr. Phil more than once, so I knew I'd just better get out of there. I told her that I had to use the phone, I needed to call my wife. She said, okay, I get up and I leave. Hey Doc, I might be reading this totally wrong, but I'm feeling some chemistry here between the both of us. Do you want to catch a movie when we're finished? No. Chris Tuff, the man, the legend, the myth, the lie. Lie number one. Everyone on Spreaker knows that Chris Top cheats his play statistics. Oh yeah, of course I cheat. Not many people know this, but I happen to be the only one on Spreaker with a super secret and better code. I can put my player on any site that I have access to. No one else has this power. <laughs> Lie number two. Chris Top fakes his ranking. Oh, well, I use internet cafes, libraries, things like that. I hire homeless people and I force them to watch the show. It's cheap labor. We all know one thing for sure. No one would ever listen to Chris Top simply because he has a good show. Oh, yeah, I tried that. Doesn't work. Lie number three. Chris Top steals followers. Oh yeah, that's the easiest thing ever. People are only allowed to follow one person at a time on Spreaker. Plus, when other DJs go live, I send out a high-frequency alert that brings other people to my show. It hypnotizes them. Honestly, the Chris Top program sucks. All those people in my live chat, they're my cousins. And here we are back again. Now, Nicole brought up an interesting question in the chat uh, because we started talking about Mountain Dew. And imagine that uh, talking about Mountain Dew on my show right now. I have uh, two, I guess, are they cases when they're twelves? Is that a case or would a case be 24? Well, I mean, if a case is 24, I have a case because I have two twelves, but that that's what I have in my fridge. And I think there might be some mayonnaise um, in there somewhere. And maybe a little bit of cream cheese, I think. But the Mountain Dews are there. And they're chilled. Very good. Now, she brought up an interesting question. She loves Mountain Dew herself. But she says she likes the throwback Dew. 
you know, the throwback dew with the real sugar in it. And I get it. That's how Mountain Dew started, you know, with the real sugar. And I'm sure it's better for you. And that, that almost doesn't even seem right, saying that Mountain Dew is, is better for you uh, in a sentence. It, it doesn't sound right at all. But I, either way, I know it's bad for you. But, but I, I'm assuming I, I drank that when I was younger. But then they switched to the artificial sweeteners and things like that. And I don't know. I, I tried the throwback stuff, I guess, about a year ago. I bought my 12-pack, and I was so disappointed. I had such high expectations, but I should have known they just they couldn't make it better. And I think what what it is is maybe the artificial stuff has just ruined my taste buds. Or maybe it's put me in some sort of a trance. It could be the link to the zombie apocalypse. You just you just never know. Uh, but anyway, I couldn't go back and I couldn't drink the throwback stuff. So I have to stick with the, with the, the regular Mountain Dew now. Now, Nicole says that she likes the throwback and she's debating me on which is better. So I'd like to know what you think is better. Do you think the, the original Mountain Dew with the sugar, or do you think the, the, the regular Mountain Dew that you buy now in most of the stores is, is better? Well, I think, I, I think I'm going to win this debate just because, the throwback stuff's not that easy to find. Now, but I don't live in Canada. Maybe that's what they have in Canada. I don't know. Uh, but, but I mean, it, it's very easily accessible, the stuff that I'm drinking. So I, I think that speaks volumes uh, for the debate. So I don't Maybe Nicole's taste buds are out of whack, or maybe it's just the rest of the world. Maybe they stock the throwback Mountain Dew just for Nicole. And, and probably she doesn't buy it fast enough, so it leaked out of Canada and, and came into some of our stores. And that's what I'm thinking. Uh, now, Travis says he likes the Mountain Dew Voltage. You know, I get enough kick from the regular Mountain Dew. I don't, I don't have to have, like, the crazy stuff. Now, I don't know if Scooter's still here or not, but he could probably tell you some stories. I'm sure Scooter's probably woken up in, in, a, in a little puddle of urine many times. Um, so I'm sure he could tell you some stories. I, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. I had a couple of friends over last night. I was actually helping them uh, helping them out with a little project, and it's it happens to be two lesbian friends uh, of mine. And, and no, it doesn't give me cool points. I'm still a dork, but I did. I had two hot chicks in my house last night, and I didn't have a chance in hell with either one of them. But and I understand that. And see, and it was okay because I knew that going into it because they're not attracted to men. So, <clears throat> and I okay okay. I've made the statement on the show before. It's I think it's near impossible to actually become friends with the opposite sex and just friends because one of the two parties is going to have an ulterior motive. That's just the way it is. That's just that's just how it goes. And 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 see and the girl may swear up and down. Okay, I swear he's just my friend. I mean, we, we've known each other all of our lives, and, and, and he's like my brother. And the guy will say that, too. She believes it, but in the back of his mind, he's thinking, one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to score with her. Well, okay, I have to eat my words, because you can be friends with the opposite sex. In my situation, because, well, they're, they're both lesbians. So that see, so that makes it all cool, so kind of cool because it, it gets rid of any any questions that I may have had. So anyway, I, I did. I had two hot lesbians in my house last night, and and we were we were just hanging out, and they said, uh, "Do you want us to bring the alcohol over?" And I don't I don't drink, you know, a whole lot. And I told her, I said, "Look, you know, if you're gonna bring over alcohol, it's it's got to be like a girly drink because I just I don't drink a lot of you know beer." And, and like stuff that, that guys usually drink. I just, I don't do it. And then right back at me, she says, she says, I knew it. I knew you were gay. I'm not gay. I, I love, oh God, I love women. I really, really do. Uh, I love beautiful women. I honestly do. But see, it, oh. So I told her, I explained to her that I wasn't gay. So, so she's, she's good. See, I think lesbians dig me just because 
I think lesbians dig me just because I, I'm not afraid to show that feminine side. And I know that gets me nowhere. <laughs> I know it gets me nowhere in life. Because I could be hanging out with 50 women. If they're all lesbians, I ain't getting lucky. I'm never getting... Now, I have a very special friend in the chat right now. Uh, <laughs> they have a Pepsi throwback? No way. I bet that sucks even worse. I bet the Pepsi throwback sucks. I bet it sucks one of those chocolate-covered anuses. Well, I hope it's not a chocolate-covered anus. It's a, the edible chocolate anus thing. <laughs> and Travis is gonna he's gonna drink enough to make up for me but I have a really good friend in my chat I want everybody to give a very warm dork welcome to Cookie now Cookie is it okay if I tell everybody what you do for a living because if I tell everybody what you do for a living I am going to get like a thousand cool points just for mentioning that you're my friend yeah so if you'll give me the okay, I'll let everybody know, and then we'll talk. We'll discuss it. <laughs> and I'm actually, I've, I've talked to Cookie before, and I, and I told Cookie, I said, look, I got to have you on the show because there are questions that people need to ask you. And see, I'm just, I would, you, uh, see, there's a delay. <laughs> There's a delay because I think there's like a 20 or 30 second delay. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping Cookie's going to tell me it's all right. <laughs> a gay apocalypse. That would be interesting. A lot of gay zombies walking around. That would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Oh, but anyway, I did. I drank last night and, and she, made, um, she made a Midori Sour for me. And you know, it was so freaking good I didn't even feel like I was drinking alcohol it was amazing it was almost as good as drinking the dew I'm, I'm not joking I'm not kidding all right now cookie said go for it all right so I'm gonna go for it now cookie you've got to do me a favor you've got to do me a favor because I'm really wanting these cool points okay so you don't know what this means to a dork. You have no idea. But see, I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe you have a little bit of dork in you because, because you're my friend in the first place. So, <laughs> so Cookie, what I want you to do, and I ask everybody to do this, and I, I'm not just saying this because you're super smoking hot. I'm saying this because, I, well, I ask everybody to do it. So would you post a picture of yourself on the Facebook page? And uh, it's, it's the Chris Top program. Can somebody get a link to my Facebook and post it in the chat for Cookie? Uh, and this, this cookie will prove that you're a dork and you're okay being a dork. And it will also further prove that you can be a super hot smoking dork. So you don't know what this does for people like us. You see, see you, you cookie could single-handedly change the way dorks are seen in the world. Yeah. And I just got a, a tweet. Well, not really a tweet. See, cookie has, cookie has my um, my personal number. That's how cool I am. Now, so so this is what I'm getting back to. Cookie's profession. When I first started talking to her, she says, well, I'm a dancer. You know, I mean, you, you, when a girl says she's a dancer, you can tell if she's a ballerina or not. Right? Well, see, I knew she wasn't a ballerina. So my first thought was, ah, Cookie's a stripper. That was my first thought. Well, I was right. But see, I didn't say stripper because I try to be politically correct. Even though you think stripper. Uh, but she says, yes, I'm an exotic dancer. And I was like, really? Automatically. Automatically. Uh, I go from being, you know, fairly confident down to nothing. Down to no confidence whatsoever. 
while I'm talking to Cookie. So she tells me uh, that she's an exotic dancer. And then, you know, and then she says in her own words, you can just call it a stripper if you want. So see, that made Cookie very cool. <laughs> in my eyes. Because, see, if you think about it like this, you know, if you call somebody an exotic dancer, but you're thinking stripper, th there's no difference. There's no difference whatsoever. So, I mean, you might as well call the person a stripper. And she's okay with that. But, uh, see, my intentions, I'm going to have Cookie on the show one day. And uh, I'm going to ask her some questions. Because it's, it's cool to be able to sit down with a stripper and ask her questions about her, her day at work. See, it's a lot different than sitting down and talking with a librarian. You know? I mean, there, there aren't too many jobs that are, are more interesting. I mean, maybe if somebody... And Cookie's her stage name, too. That's her, that's her stripper name, is Cookie. You know how you find out your stripper name? I don't know how Cookie found hers. How did you find your, your stripper name? You, I, I'm assuming you just like cookies. I don't know. But this is how you find your stripper name, in case you didn't know. You take um, your first pet that you ever had, and then you, you take the name of the, the road or the street that you grew up on, and then you put the two together. And thank you, Nicole, for posting the, uh, the Facebook page. And uh, when you guys get a chance, uh, go over and check out Cookie's picture. And I'm hoping she's going to, uh, to post it for us. And then that will be proof that you can be a dork and you can be a super smoking hottie as well. Now, your stripper name, back to that. See, I get sidetracked again. But your, your stripper name comes from the, the first pet that you owned and, and then the road that you grew up on. So if, if I were a stripper, which that ain't never going to happen. Not in a gazillion years, it's never going to happen. Uh, my first pet's name, it was a St. Bernard. Her name was Ginger. And I grew up on Melon Road. So that's a pretty good stripper name. Ginger Melon. So if I were to, to grace the stage and if I were to show you my talents on the pole, one of my friends last night says, uh, a stripper looks like a confused fireman. <laughs> Because they, they want to go up the pole instead of slide down it. So I would, I would be known as Ginger Melon. So if you guys would, <laughs> post your stripper names into the chat. And uh, Cookie, let me know. You can let me know in the chat or you can text me and let me know if, uh, if you get your picture posted on the Facebook fan page. And um, I'm sure some of the guys would like to go and um, oogle uh, over it. Toby says his dog's name was Ginger as well. Now, Toby, you can't have the same stripper name. And you can ask Cookie. I'm sure that there's, a, there's some kind of a rule against that uh, in the club. So you can't have two Gingers because I, I don't want you stealing my thunder, Toby. So maybe you should go with like your second animal. And maybe it was something cool. Maybe you could be Dusty or something like that. Now, Cookie said it used to be Cookie because that's been my nickname for a long time. She says, oh, she goes by Chloe now. So, see, Chloe's one of those one of those little sexy names. See, Cookie's kind of cute, but uh, but check her and post your picture, would you please, so people can see it and they'll I'm I'm sure they'll comment on it. See, you just given me like ten million, like ten gazillion cool points, is what you've done. Oh 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 oh! And I had a see, I got sidetracked again. I had a question for my lesbian friends last night because I have always always wondered this and and you know the thing is they didn't they didn't even answer it but i'm still going to tell you what i asked him anyway you know i i talk a lot of times on the show about uh, superpowers and stuff like what kind of superpowers would you like to have if you could do this if you you know would you like would you like to be able to fly or read minds or or be invisible and, and a lot of times people will say to be, just to be invisible. And it's because everybody's a pervert. <laughs> because, especially the guys, they, they just want to walk into a women's locker room and stand there and just look around. But then I asked my lesbian friends, I, I was like, wait a minute. It's almost like you have 
that superpower. You can, holy, holy crap, you're invisible. You can walk into a women's locker room. Nobody's going to say a word. You can just hang out in there all day. You can look at anything you want. If I were to walk into a women's locker room, I would get escorted out immediately by the police. Immediately. Now, if I was a lesbian chick, I could get away with it. And Cookie just said that she's trying to get the pic posted. So, so guys, just be patient. She could actually be the first stripper to ever post her dorky picture on my Facebook page. This, this is a day in history. This is truly a day in history. <laughs> I'm sure I have something else to talk about while we're waiting. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Travis, I picture you as having stinky feet. And I don't mean that in a mean way. It's, it's <clears throat> more, <clears throat> more or less a term of endearment. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there's actually something useful that we can do with stinky feet now. Yeah, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. Scientists researching the deadly mosquito-borne disease, malaria, have made a very interesting discovery. Now, mosquitoes carrying a malaria parasite were three times more likely to be drawn to the odors from a dirty sock than the other mosquitoes who didn't have the malaria. So see, people who have stinky feet can actually be pretty useful. Aside from maybe waking up someone that's passed out. Now, scientists, they hope to use the findings to uh, possibly develop more efficient traps that uh, target malaria-carrying mosquitoes only. So I think that's kind of interesting. It, it, it's amazing, isn't it, how science works and, and what they can figure out? I would hate to be the scientist working on that project, though. You know, because I wouldn't want to deal with that odor all day long. Have you seen... You know, I am super, super stoked about the new Superman movie coming out. Have you seen the trailer for that yet? I have such high expectations for this movie. And I was talking to one of my friends the other night, and she said that she doesn't think it's going to be good. And we argued about it. We totally freaking argued about it. Because I think this is going to be the movie of the year. I think this is going to break a ton of records. It looks better than the other Superman movies that have come out. It's like they reinvented him, but they still he's still Superman. He's still cool. But I, on my Facebook page, I actually posted a link. And it's about a 13-minute video. And it's, it's a featurette where, they, where the actors talk about the movie and they show behind-the-scenes stuff. And those are usually kind of sort of boring. This one's good. Watch this one. It's really cool because it shows you, you know, a few things. Show it, okay, it answers the question why, why they got rid of the underwear on the outside. And, you know, between you and me, I'm glad. I'm really happy they got rid of the underwear on the outside. It was like in the first Spider-Man movies, the first three, uh, before they redid Spider-Man. I was happy that he shot the web out of his wrist. Because to me, it just seemed more realistic than him developing some super, super web shooter thing. I mean, didn't it? I, I thought it was cooler that it came out of his wrist. But, but really and truly, if it's going to be realistic, if it's going to be realistic, then, then he actually would have shot it out of his butt. So, you know, so there's got to be a happy medium. Because Spider-Man wouldn't be as cool if he was shooting the web out of his butt and swinging around. So I get that. But when you get a chance after the show... Go to my Facebook page and uh, make sure you check out. I'm getting tweets. I'm getting tweets. Uh, uh, okay. I don't know what these. See, I, I, I get sidetracked all the time. So if you're going to tweet me, tweet me. And I'll, I'll try to. But, but try to make it have something to do with what I'm talking about. Like edible anuses or, or Superman or something like that. But I'm telling you, it's going to be the movie of the year. It's going to break all kinds of record because it looks that good. I absolutely cannot wait to see it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm that excited about seeing it. I really am. 
So what's going on in the chat? Toby says, I'm a lesbian. I like girls. I think all us guys, Toby, are actually lesbians trapped in men's bodies. And, Toby, and Travis did, did admit to having stinky feet. He says he's on his feet all day, so he says they get pretty bad. So see, Travis, you are single-handedly saving the world from a malaria epidemic. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so we can all thank Travis for that. Uh, now, okay, Cookie says she was trying to get that posted on the page, so I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to see if it's there. I'm telling you, this is going to be a milestone uh, in the history of the Chris Top program uh, if she gets that posted on the page. And I see that she's liked the page. So now I'm just waiting for the super sexy dorky stripper picture. And see, I'm a trained voiceover artist, and that's why I was able to say that um, so effortlessly. <laughs> I'm kind of conceited sometimes, too. I really am. Uh, what do you want to... Oh, oh, how many of you... Okay, this is interesting. Uh, a lot of you I know like to sunbathe. Uh, like to hang out in the sun by the pool all day, stuff like that. But sunscreen actually has another use. Now, if, if you are willing to wear sunscreen just every day of the year, it's kind of like the fountain of youth. I mean, even if you're not sunbathing. I know it, it seems kind of weird, but listen. The key to younger-looking skin really may be as simple as sunscreen. Now, there's a new study. It's provided what uh, may be the strongest proof yet that slathering on sunscreen daily may not only cut your risk for skin cancer, but also, actually, it could slow down your skin's aging process. Isn't that interesting? It sort of makes me want to go out and buy a whole bunch of sunscreen. Now, there's an, or the Australian researchers, they found that adults under age 55 who use this on a regular basis, year-round, everyday lives, not just at the beach or the pool, but they showed a 24% less skin aging effect after four and a half years than those who used it only occasionally. 24%. <clears throat> Let's break that down. Say you live to be 100. You're going to look 75. Are you following me here? That's a pretty meaningful thing. So, hey, it, it, it's something to think about. I mean, if you care about that stuff. I mean, if you care about wrinkles and stuff like that. Oh, and I've got to warn you guys. I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but this is scary stuff. Okay, listen. Zeus is a six-year-old Trojan horse uh, program. Okay, it infects your computer, and then it sits dormant. It's, it's like it's there, but you don't know it's there until you go and you log into a banking site. Now, when you log into the banking site, this is what it does. It steals your password... And it drains your account. Yeah. This thing is vicious. Oh, oh, oh. And it can also put up a dummy bank page to gain more information, like maybe your social security number. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? Yeah. And even better, uh, Zeus has uh, risen steadily this year, and it actually peaked in May, and it's been tr uh, tracked back to a Russian gang... And Okay, you're ready for this. The Russian gang, they call themselves the Russian Business Network. And they've pretty much been linked to everything from malware to child pornography. So if you haven't decided to update your spyware or your, soft, your uh, antivirus, then it might be the time, you know, it might be the time to do it now. Because I, I wouldn't want to mess with Zeus. I really wouldn't. I keep checking my Facebook page like a little schoolboy, and I keep waiting for Cookie to post her stripper picture, but I'm not seeing it yet. Cookie, don't let me down, Cookie. Don't do it. I, see, I'm, I need these cool points. I'm serious. Now, let's take just a minute. Uh, if you're a dork, if you're like me and you're a dork, this is what I want you to do. And, and chances are, whether you want to admit it or not, you may be just a little bit like me if you're listening to the show. I'm just throwing that out there. 
I'm going to play for you, and I do this every show, I'm going to play for you the Dork National Anthem, a.k.a. the Waba Song. It's by my good buddy Belgium Tim. And he wrote this for us. He did. So I want you to stand to your feet, place your hand over your heart, raise your other hand into the air, and I want you to say this. And we're going to follow it up with Big N and the Dork uh, Rap. But I want you to say this. I'm a dork, I'm proud, and I'm hip. <laughs> yeah, a Big N in the building. Representing... You see what I just did there? I screwed up. And that's okay. You know, see, see, I could get away with screwing up because I am a dork. This is the Dork National Anthem by my good buddy Belgium Tim. Dork being awesome every day. I'm working on being awesome every day. Everybody, I got something to say. This guy ride over there is Waba every single day. Okay, what is Waba? It gets so creepy, cult thing. No, dude, it's just a little dork singing. Well, W is working, O is on it, B is being. And A is for awesome, and that's the dork singing. I'm all ready, awesome, but that's okay. Cause Mr. Chris Top is too, but he just doesn't know it. And so are all of you from here on to the on far. And just so you know, life is good and I'm gone, gone, gone. All right, but I'm not gone. I'm still here. Okay, now, so, all right, so Cookie's having some technical difficulties. Okay, so Cookie, it's the, and Nicole actually put up a link in the chat uh, on Spreaker, so if you want to scroll up, she put a link to the uh, to the Chris Top Program uh, Facebook page, and that's, and you've already joined it. It's the one you joined, so uh, post it on the, the actual fan page. See, she's trying really hard here, guys. Uh, I'll post the link again, but I know that you've already, you've already joined it, so you're there. Um, so yeah, just, how do you, I mean, how do you post pictures? I don't know. I'm, I'm like the owner of the page, so it might be different for me. I'm assuming you can just, uh, you can just upload a picture just like you would on anybody's Facebook. I'm guessing. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that answered your question. See, because nobody's going to believe me until I have proof, uh, that, that you're a really super cool smoking hot stripper dork. Nobody, nobody at all is going to believe me. So you've got to get this posted. Uh, she says, I'm going to pull it up my computer and see if that works. I don't know what that means. Uh, but hopefully. Oh, so she's probably trying to do it on her phone. So, see, yeah, see, I don't know. See, that would probably be pretty difficult. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could do that on my phone. Oh, here's some good news. Al-Qaeda has actually set up a, uh, a PR division. Exa- yeah, it's just like Walmart. You walk into Walmart... And they've got the little customer service desk. Well, now Al-Qaeda actually has that as well. Yeah. (laughs) It could actually be the world's busiest customer service outfit like in the history of mankind if Al-Qaeda is serious about this. But they have launched a complaints department. Now, the move, it's actually an attempt to show that uh, the terrorist group can responsibly govern areas in the northeast of Syria. <clears throat> I just can't take this seriously. I, I just, I can't. I wonder if they offer you like a chocolate. Like when you go in, oh, have a chocolate. Have a piece of hard candy. Have a seat. What's your complaint? Talk to us. Well, yeah, I own a gas station and there was a car bomber that stopped by there a couple of days ago. He, uh, he filled his gas tank up, and then he just left. He didn't pay for it. I tried to chase him down. Next thing I knew, he's gone. So, I mean, how can I get my money back for the gas? Have a chocolate. And just have, have a piece of hard candy. Would you like some coffee? We'll make this right, I promise you. 
See, see, I don't see this as working. I really don't. But uh, if you do have a complaint uh, with Al-Qaeda, you actually, uh, it has to be in writing. You have to provide actual details. And you have to give evidence. Yeah, I'm like, thanks a lot for the offer, guys. But I... I'm really afraid of you. So I don't think I'm going to just waltz up in your customer service place and uh, make a complaint. You know, I'm just going to kind of walk right on by there. Like really fast. Speaking of Al-Qaeda, the, uh, the pyramids, and just so you know, this is a public service announcement for the pyramids. The pyramids are a lovely and safe place to visit. Please stop by. And Egypt's begging people to come by. Uh, because they've had so many warnings from the, from the embassy about recent incidents uh, near the pyramids. Egypt is uh, assuring everyone that the area is perfectly safe. And I'm sure they're saying, if you have problems, we have the Al-Qaeda help desk right around the corner. Right behind that sphinx over there. You can just go talk to the Al-Qaeda help desk and they'll, they'll offer you some hard candy and maybe a chocolate. Now, the message to American travelers, uh, they're warned of vendors in the area who might become aggressive or violent uh, to attract business. And that's how you attract a business anywhere. You just become overly aggressive and super violent. Tons and tons of people will flock into your business. Now, tourists were urged to elevate their situational awareness as well as avoid night travel. Sounds like a safe place, doesn't it? And uh, take along a, a trusted tourist guide. How do you know who you can trust? Okay, so I can't go at night. Um, I, need to, I need to find a trusted guide. I need to elevate my situational awareness. I don't even know what that means. Now, the, the country's antiquities ministry. And the only reason I know what antiqu antiquities mean is because I love Indiana Jones. And they mentioned that quite a bit. Now, the, the country's antiquities ministry called the comments baseless. And they claim the area has been totally secure since 2011's uprising. Uh, the ministry hasn't made any comment about the dangers of booby trap tombs and mummy curses either. Now, see, that's what I would be worried about. Because I am a big fan of Indiana Jones, so I know... I know how those booby traps work. I'm not stupid. And, and, if, and if there is a problem, I know to take it to the Al-Qaeda help desk. Oh, oh, we all need to put our hands together for Ireland because they had a big day. A very, very big day. Because Ireland, it's, it's a really cloudy place. I mean, have you ever noticed any any hot babes in Ireland that are that are sunbathing that are actually have dark skin and they just you don't notice that because they don't have sunlight. Now there was an Irish newspaper that came out, and when I first saw it, I thought it was talking about a um, like a UFO was spotted or something you know something silly. But uh, it, the the title of the paper said "Yellow Object Spotted in Sky." But you know they were talking about the sun. I mean, you can only imagine the shock, the wonder, the confusion that people of Ireland experienced on Tuesday morning when they rose to greet yet another fine day of gray and gloomy skies and they were confronted with a strange object hovering in the heavens. Something huge. Something, something bright. Something warm and yellow. So strange, the thing warranted the newspaper headline, Yellow object spotted in sky. Now, there's ancient Irish legend. It tells of hell's daytime moon. It's a, it's a massive orb that appears every 200 years to burn the flesh off of fair-skinned islanders. The sun. They had some sun. And whenever they have sun, so you know. If, if the sun makes the headlines, they never get any sun. And I would think... I would think that Ireland has got to be full of just depressed people. Is there anybody in Ireland listening right now? Are you depressed? Do you need to call the Chris Top Crisis Helpline? I'm just asking. 
But see, and that's why people in Ireland drink so much. Because they're fighting off their depression. Yeah. It's because they, it's, it's because they have no sunlight. All right, I'm going to check my Facebook page again. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping Cookie has the picture posted. See, I don't know. See, I, I should have pre-planned this, but I didn't know Cookie was going to be listening tonight for sure. So it's not there yet. So even if it's after the show, when she gets it posted, you're going to have to go there and comment. And, I, and the proof is going to be there sooner or later that, that it is possible to be a super smoking dork. And Cookie's going to prove that. I'd like to say hello to Paranormal Phil. How are you, Paranormal? Paranormal Phil, did you hear about that last story I was just talking about? There was actually a strange, glowing, yellow, very large orb over the skies of Ireland on Tuesday morning. So you may want to check into that, Paranormal Phil. And that's probably why he's here, because he was able to read my mind, and uh, he knew that I was actually going to talk about that. Now, this is, I think, pretty interesting. Now, I want you to listen to this. Because, see, see to me, this, this kind of stuff is still new. Because I was married guy for 14 years, and I sort of miss the, the evolution of the Internet and things that people do on the Internet, like the dating and stuff like that. Now, not only are more Americans finding love online, it's increasingly resulting in getting hitched. Now, get these statistics. This is big time. This is really big time. With more than a third of couples who married between 2005 and 2012 first meeting on the internet. A third of all couples that got married over that seven-year time span met on the internet. Now, there's a dating site-funded survey of 19,131 married couples Hang on, let me see what Cookie's telling me here. Uh, nope, nope, I was actually poked. Yeah, I get alerts when I'm poked as well. Uh, and too bad I wasn't poked by Cookie. Because then I could say, hey, Cookie poked me. It's a lot cooler than saying, hey, Tyson poked me. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So anyway, a dating site funded survey of 19,131 married couples... Uh, and research by the University of Chicago found that couples who met online also reported being more satisfied in their relationships and were slightly less likely to separate and divorce. Maybe there is some good coming out of the internet. May maybe the internet isn't as depressing as we all thought. Now, researchers had several theories as to why this is the case, including the idea that people are more open when they first meet online. But obviously, it's because a well-placed um, smiley face, you know, is probably worth a thousand words. See, because when, when you're with somebody in real life, you have that period of uncomfortable silence. And see, to me, I think that's how you know when you really get along with somebody. Uh, and this could be the first day you met, or this could be 50 years down the road when you're together. If you can have that little period of comfortable silence, I think maybe that's when you know you're with the right person. Now, if you're sitting there and nobody's talking and you're like starting to get all nervous and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to say? And then you end up saying something stupid. Maybe it just wasn't meant to be. So, so I'm thinking maybe on the internet, you don't have that little period of, of uncomfortable silence because you can always put a little smiley face in there. Or if they piss you off, you can put a little frowny face. And I got to say, you know, the frowny face actually kind of hurts my feelings. It, it does. If, if I say something out of line and then somebody like, uh, like comes back at me with F off, then I'm, I'm cool with that. But if I say something out of line and they put the little, little, little sad face on there, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. I shouldn't. I'm so sorry. So, you know, I think that may have a lot to do with it as well. Uh, but my own theory, my own theory on this is if you meet people online, well, you're kind of sort of forced to get to know them before you jump in the bedroom and boink, right? Because you're, you're forced to just talk. Hello? You actually get to know the person before you marry them. 
Ah, that kind of makes sense to me. So really and truly, it was just a matter of time before the rest of the world, I think, woke up. Uh, now, Phil says, I have a friend that is over there going to college right now. I will check with him to see what he saw. <laughs> Phil, it was actually the sun. Uh, see, the sun doesn't come out a lot, so uh, it actually made the headlines. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to poke uh, Tys or, yeah, Tyson back or not, Nicole, just because I, I've heard about you crazy Canadians. I've, I've heard about you Canadians, and I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, oh, see, I can't do that. I can't make fun of Canadians. Oh, I, I, I swore to never make fun of Canadians again because you guys invented the pizza burger for crying out loud. All right, let me go to the Facebook page. I was told by some excited people that uh, Cookie actually posted on the Chris Top program. There you go. There you go. Okay, now, I have proof, guys. I have undeniable, 100% proof that you can be a dork and you can be super smoking, sizzling hot on my Facebook page. And yeah, Cookie's, she's my friend. See, we're tight. We're tight. I have a friend named Cookie and she's hot. So make sure you go, <laughs> make sure you go over to the uh, to the Facebook page and uh, you post a post a quick comment on there and let uh, let Cookie know what you think about her uh, about her dorky picture. And when I say dorky, I do say that with a little quotations. You know, I do the little quotations with my with my uh, fingers. It's like her dorky picture because really it's not dorky. But anyway, I, I do appreciate uh, each and every one of you. I do not, nor will I ever ever take any of you for granted. There are a million other things you could be doing, but you chose to listen to me. You did. And that makes me feel really, really good. And I, I, I honestly, I can't thank you enough for that. So with that being said, until I broadcast again, I want you to remember this. See, this is never easy for me. And, and, and if you missed the show yesterday, rem I am going to try to do more shows. The whole reason I did a show yesterday morning at 4 a.m. was just because I wanted to let you guys know I was still here. I wanted to let you know that I have not went anywhere. I'm still here, and I plan on doing more shows on a regular basis. And I've got some vacation time coming up, too. Um, not this week, but I think it starts next week. I'm going to have like nine days off. Now, there's a couple of days I'm going to try, if I can, to get out of town a little bit and uh, maybe enjoy myself some. And, and then... Uh, the other days, I'm going to spend broadcasting and working on production and doing stuff that, uh, that I love doing, doing, uh, doing things that I'm passionate about. And that's how I'm planning on spending the majority of my time off. So expect to hear uh, from me uh, doing some shows, and, and hopefully I'll have um, some new production for you and things like that. So it should be a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm super excited about spending some time with you and um, hopefully uh, getting to know you again. So it'll be a lot of fun. Until I broadcast again, please remember life is good and I'm gone. Um, is it over yet? Completely over. You have been exposed to the Chris <laughs> Top program. Yeah, okay, are we done? I, I really gotta get a life. You know, there's something in incredibly wrong with my... Um, uh, my speaker console, it's like I'll push a button and I think I pushed it, but I didn't because I'm sitting there like arr, 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 while my outro is playing. But anyway, I don't care. So if you if you listen to my show, you know that I never totally leave. I'll be leaving soon. It's, it's a good indicator that the show's almost over, but I usually don't leave right away uh, just because I, I like to give this to the people that, uh, that, know, that know me and they, they like to listen. Now, I've got a survey here that I want to talk to you about. And it's pretty interesting. Uh, for me, it's kind of like one of those duh moments. Just because... <coughs> excuse me. Just because it's stuff that I already knew. But maybe you didn't know it. I don't know. But we're going we're gonna to talk about it. 
Oh, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Now, there's a sex at work survey. And it reveals this, that we have a shockingly horny workforce. <clears throat> you know, I'm thinking if they took the survey anywhere, um, I think that they would find out the same thing. Like, I don't know, maybe a college campus? Possibly? You think? Maybe? Now, a Business Insider recently conducted a survey of 2,500 professionals asking about sex at work. And it turns out people think about sex at work a lot. And you know, if they think about it at work a lot, more than likely they think about it other places a lot too. Now, about 85% think people at the same company should be able to sleep together. And you know, I'm a guy, I've been there, done that. It doesn't always work out when you do that. Things can get pretty messy when you do that. And I'm just saying from experience. Now, 93% think that there's no obligation to report to HR. And everybody loves HR, don't they? Now, 90% report it being sexually attracted to a colleague. And we'll see, it just makes sense because you, you, you're at home part of the time, you sleep part of the time, the rest of the time you're at work. So you're around these people a lot, and even people that you were just maybe semi-attracted to, once you get to know them, once you strike up a conversation with them, uh, a lot of times they'll become just hot, you know? And, it, and, and it's, it's weird. It's really weird how that works. 90% report it being sexually attracted to colleagues. Um, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking the other 10%, they're probably lying about that. Now, there's 64% report it hitting on a colleague at one point, and 80% report it being hit on... Finally, 54% have actually had sex with a coworker. So there you go. If you want to get laid, just go to work. <laughs> that's, that's all you got to do. Now, I'm actually leaving now. Now, see, Phil, why did you do that? See, I got through the whole show. I got through the whole show. And you mentioned like... <clears throat> Phil says, as long as it's not sex with... Oh, God. See, why do you do that? You know how I feel about her. He says, as long as it's not sex with Lady... Yeah. I think... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. I think on that note, I'm going to end the show... This time for real. Thank you guys so much for coming. I love you all. I appreciate you. Until I broadcast again, remember this. Life is good and I'm gone. Thank you for the time. Here at the Chris Top Program, we're always taking steps to make the show multicultural. Because we have to remember, this is the internet. I'm working on being awesome. A.K.A. Waba. Dorks of the world, unite. Thank you for the time. That was sweet. Now try something in Irish. Be a good carja. This mission, Rory McQueer, us lock arm and in air. August and ish, talk to a guest or on Chris Topshow or www.punkspreaker.com. Yeah, I didn't understand any of that. Uh, go ahead and try the other thing we talked about. Lucky charms. They're magically delicious. That was really beautiful. It really was.